Okay. Nice. If you keep it nice for him. Yeah, he was shaking his head actually before you even had to halter the vital on. Yeah. Yeah, even when he was just high, he was shaking his head. So. No, you were right. Just the interruption was all that was. So he, when he started to go the wrong way, when his nose wasn't even pointed in the right way, and his body started to move, that's when you just want to give a little wiggle on the line to interrupt. There you go. To interrupt the wrong idea. Hi. Keep going. Keep him on the outside of the pile and you on the inside of the pile. Go ahead and see if you can ask him to trot. Hand forward. Yep. Get yourself in the kick zone. It's your energy on his shoulder, not his there you go. on that shoulder, the opposite shoulder, send, 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 leave him alone. Good. Allow him to just take that line. Don't, don't worry about dropping it or allow him to. Raise your hand, ask for the trot. Good. Much better. Ask for the walk. Got to reel in a minute. I'm gonna bring. Good. Go ahead and ask him to stop. Good. So, if I was doing 
I went to a that would be a sufficient pre-flight check to say, okay, he did everything I asked him to do and he did it with proficiency. So if I was looking to get on because I had people waiting for me, I would have been satisfied with that to be able to get on. If you would like to do more to make sure that you're better, because he did have a SAS, but he wasn't really being that bad. If you do feel that you wanted to do a little bit more to make sure that he's connected before you get on, I'm absolutely fine with doing that as well. Um, if, like I said, like you, you know him, so if you feel that he still needs a little bit more done before you come on, I'm totally cool with that. If you normally just get on, then, you know, that would... if you want um, while we're just getting him warmed up uh, that's could potentially raise the energy or it could potentially help us see where his energy is if it was to get raised, how he would be bad if he would be bad or if he would be good if he'd be bucky if he'd be whatever you know we want to say Great, you're really connected today. You know, we could have a really nice ride today. So if if we're gonna take it up a notch, that's fine. We could find a different horse by taking it up a notch. I don't think as far as riding, we're gonna get past the trot today anyway, because we're going to be working on our seat. Um, so the mindset he's in, now you know him better than me, so if if it was a horse that I knew well and I said he's if he's in this mindset we're good. That's great, but I'm not encouraging you to get on any better than that. on a lack of communication or a lack of understanding or do you feel it's because all of a sudden he feels his oats? Oh, yes. Well, no. Oats is, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm really good now, you know. So okay. Okay. Um, well, we're going to spend a lot of time walking to make sure that we're finding that spot we need. Um, and the trot we're going to ask for is a very, very gentle, that, that almost walk trot, the very, very gentle jog. Um, that's not very good at all. He will be. Yep. Um, cause what we're going to do is we're going to teach him the emergency stop, which is a one rain, one rain stop. And it's going to teach him to cross over his hind feet and respond to us that way. We're going to do that at the walk to a standstill, and then we're going to do it from uh, a faster walk to a slow walk where that becomes the cue is just lifting this rein, but not actually asking for the full disengagement. So that's going to be your brakes. It's going to be your actual, you know, this is the, the foot pedal brake, and then this is your emergency brake. So we want to make sure that that's installed before this way you're always safe. Because you, you, you know, you have to make sure that you're always safe. And by having that one rein stop, that stops them from bolting, it stops them from bucking, it stops them from because you've taken their power away. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have it installed, and we can install it on the ground if you want. I usually do install it on the ground um, where we can tell him right off the bat, I have control of your hind feet. Well, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it based on a rain cue. Um, so at first, kind of, I wanted to get a little bit away from the middle of the pile because he's probably going to spin around here. So at first, I'm just going to show you kind of the mechanics of it, and I'm going to let you actually do it. I stand at the saddle as if I'm in the saddle, okay? I'm going to ask him to bring his nose around to his elbow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a steady feel, and as soon as he, as soon as he gives, as soon as he gives, I'm going to release the line. I can have the rest of it in this hand, so that way when I release the line, it doesn't get to the ground, but I'm going to release the line so he knows he did the right thing. The first part of this is he's going to come to his elbow and it means nothing. It means stop your feet. Okay? And that is your stop. Okay? 
then we're going to teach him about the disengagement. But right now, we're going to teach him, when I bring your nose to your shoulder, when I bring your nose to your elbow, you don't move your feet. And you'll, I'll hold you here and move with you. So now let's just say he starts spinning around, which is what they usually do. You are literally just going to stay right in the saddle position. You're going to stay right here. And wherever he goes, you're going to go with him, gluing yourself right here. Well, he is used to me because I used to do the flexing and I had the rein real low and I bring his head around. Okay. Side. Okay. So you're sort of used to doing that. Okay. So like if I were to ask him with a rein for you to bring his head over here to his shoulder, he's not going to move? Now I'm going to wait for him to give. He's understood now it means nothing about his feet. I'm going to not pull on me, not move your feet. Bring your head towards me. One more, one more give, and I'll give him back. So again, to your elbow, means nothing. Don't move your feet. Give me one little bit give. One little bit give. Good. And then I scratch him. I'm not a slapper. I want to make sure that I never slap him for being good. So if he moves his feet, I go back to one. So if I could have done that three times, I would have quit and moved on to the other side. So now he brought me back to one. So if he doesn't move, nope, now I'm back to one again. So I'm just staying with him until he stops moving his feet. The reward, he gets his head back when he stops moving his feet. If he starts moving his feet, he doesn't get rewarded till he stops moving his feet. And in this case, it was quick enough that I'm going to wait for the head, too. So I'm not there. I'm not even looking at him. I'm actually looking over there. There was a butterfly, right? Like, I don't need to look at him and put any pressure on him. I just need to be here. So I'm going to ask him again. Does it mean go anywhere? Give me your head. There. If he has an itchy spot, this is where you want to use those spots and say, there you go. See, this is us just getting along. So if this is my third time. He doesn't move. He gives me his head a little bit more. Good. And I'm going to leave him alone. So now I did three. The idea is to be able to do three, walk away, stop, do three, walk away, stop, do three, walk away. If you can do that three times, it's pretty well installed. Okay, if you can't do that three times, then you always have to go back to the beginning. So if he messes up on the second one, you're back to one. If he messes up on the third one, you're back to one. You got to get three in a row for it to make sense to them. Okay. Nope, you're going to do the side that he just did so we make sure that it feels right to you and he's going to respond properly. Because I don't want you to have to chase him when you're still trying to... Stand there. I always put one hand kind of up over the shoulder, over the, um, yep. Yep, I think I was even like holding his saddle. So I don't know, I don't know what I was doing with my other hand. But, uh, yep, and then you're going to ask his head to come around to his. Good. And now wait until he gives his head a tiny bit more. Okay, so he didn't, I did not see him go one more time. I didn't see him give his head one more time. So we want to make sure that that he understands that we're waiting for the complete compliance and that's that tiny bit more. So see how he backed up and you did not move? You need to stay with him. Good, good. And the only reason he moved is because he wasn't moving, but you did. Let go, let go now. Good. So you want to fasten yourself. And then don't grab him by the snap, because then that kind of gives him a backward feel. You're going to grab him by here, and you're going to kind of get out and around him. If you grab him by the snap, you're kind of forcing him to sort of take back up steps. And then you're going to ask him to, you're not going to move. So make sure you're in the right position when you start this. So if you move and you've asked him not to move his feet, but then you move, you're saying we should move our feet. You want to make sure that you're not giving him the, me the wrong message that it means we move our feet. Good. You hold 
studying tip. Now, if he moves, you move. Nope. Now, see, by releasing, you said, yes, it's okay. I want you to move your feet. So the release is what teaches. So when you started moving and then you let go, you released the head. By releasing the head, you said, yes, I want you to walk backwards. So he's probably going to walk backwards this time because he thought that's what you meant. And I'm going to tell you why he started backing up that time. He started backing up before you did that. When he pauses, let go. Let go. Let go. The release has to be kind of when you get the response you're looking for. We wanted, in that case, he started moving his feet. So we had to reteach him. It means nothing about his feet. So by doing that, it didn't matter about the extra piece with his head. We needed him to just stop moving his feet. So we had to reinstall the don't move your feet part. Okay. So this time, if he doesn't move his feet, then we'll look for the extra pieces of head. Good. There. Get release, release, release. So if I say this, let him go. Okay? Because the longer you don't answer him when he says, did I get it right? I thought he did, but I thought, I may not have looked for a bit of time. No, very subtle. It just has to be, it just has to be enough to say you did make this movement. Now, it's a steady pull around because what, what's happening right now is you're saying, are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? So it's not one fluid movement. You want to prepare yourself and say, I'm bringing you around. Okay. Don't, don't do these pauses coming to where you want to. Good. 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 One more time. If you get exactly that one more time. And then we'll switch around to the other side and I'll let you teach it on the other side because you will be teaching it on the other side. He will likely move when we get to the other side. Okay, so that was a little hard pull. We want it to be a fluid mental pull, like a suggest. There. Let go. Good. So unfortunately, we have to do it two more times. But um, this... Absolutely. So this time, just it's, it's very fluid. Because what happened is you went like that. So we're just, we're, bring your over here, please. So have a please. Yeah, even that's a little harsh. There. Let go. Let go. Let go. So try to make it a little, you get, I'm counting that as two, but now this time for you, try to make it a smoother, smoother ask. Gentler ask. And we want to be careful that it doesn't turn into a yank back. Okay. So now, teaching the other side, everything you're going to do is identical, but he's likely going to walk. Different eye, different horse. So you're going to be teaching this for the very first time on that side of his body. I do find Arabians transfer information pretty well, so he may be just easy to do. So I would almost say that you're a little bit in his way to do the extra bump. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Yes. Much more gentle. There. So that it is turning a tiny bit into a uh, argument with him, but it's, we're going to see if we can avoid that this time. If he argues and pulls his head away, you're just going to hold steady until he gives back. Up. Oh, we got to go back to one, but stay with that one until it happens. Up. Oh. That didn't happen. But he was still moving when you released, so he's probably going to walk this time. Stops walking, you're going to release. As soon as those feet stop, you're going to release. Release. He's probably going to walk again because it was a little delayed.
wasting anyway. We want to make sure that if we're going to explain it to him, he has to get the right answer. So he, he's not had a chance to get the right answer yet. So hold and just be patient. So that we want to be careful that we don't let him think that's the answer. Just popping his head up and down. Because then he'll just start pulling the ring. Go ahead. There. Let go. Let go. Good. Yeah, so let's, as soon as we get the desired response, try the timing of that. Just be almost, not where you're scared him, but almost where you go, oh, that's it. So that way he gets the answer in that split moment. Good boy. Now give him a little bit to soak on that. Let him let him have a minute for that because that was big for him. Because he got himself a little confused a couple times. Okay, go ahead and ask. Good. So sometimes when they get themselves confused, just a moment to soak on it helps solidify it. Try to stay in the saddle position. We're going to ask him to go. He knows a kiss, a single kiss means walk. So we're going to ask him to go. We're going to walk in the saddle position. So we're going to drive him from here. So here, my arm's over the saddle. His head is up there. We're going to ask him to walk. We're going to walk with him. And then we're going to bring him to a stop. I always do my emergency stop is to the left because if you're in trouble, you want to try to figure out which leg should go over. And what I mean by that is if the horse is bent to the left, we naturally, from all our years of training, get off the horse on the left. Do you want to teach your horse to emergency stop to the right and have to remember to get off to the right? You're not going to remember in an emergency. You're going to do what's natural. You're going to get off the side you've always gotten off. So I always do my emergency stops to the left. I teach it on both sides. But I do it on the left. Yep, 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 yep. Walk with him. Yep. Okay. Keep keep asking. He's just trying to figure out what you want. Keep asking. Keep asking. Keep asking. Good. Walk with him. Yep. Ask again. Good. He's just trying to figure out what you want. He's not trying to be bad. Good. Good boy. Good boy. That he actually had a little bit of an understanding about. Good. He wants to check out his own. Go ahead and ask him to go. And since he's already only taking about two steps on his second step, bend him around to the stop so we can help him learn it in what he's offering. Yep, ask him to go. Yep, yep, yep. Bend him to a stop. Don't get yourself out of position because that doesn't help him. Good. Now let him go. Let him go. It, was, it has to be based on him stopping his feet. The release has to be as soon as his feet stop so he can learn that that's what you're asking for. 
So this is going to be something that you can always, if you're like trotting faster than you want to trot, you can bend him just slightly down to a walk or slow that trot or come to a complete stop. You, now you're going to be able to have basically in his mind, brakes installed. You know, he may not have brakes installed. He may grab the bit and take off. So we want to make sure that he understands the brakes installed. And this is how that's done. Then you have your brakes forever. He's still trying to figure out what you want. He's never done this before. Get, don't get out of position. Stay in. Yep, yep, yep. Release, release, release. So as soon as those feet stop moving, drop the line out of your hand. So I can see that you've released it. Because I'm not seeing the release in time. Go ahead and ask him to go. not being bad he's still just trying to figure out what you want so there's none of this is stubbornness this is complete his mind is absolutely on the task he just doesn't know the task yep good boy good so it's still you held on a little bit longer like you were trying to confirm for yourself that he actually stopped as soon as he stops you got to drop that line Okay, this time we're going to look for, he's, he's starting to understand that you're asking him to walk. And if you keep stopping him after only two steps, it's like saying, go, don't go. So we're going to try to get five steps, okay? See if he wants to walk, because you just saw the cat. See if he wants to walk in the direction of the cat. Five steps later, bring him to a stop. It's not, I, I made it look like it's a yank. It's not a yank. It's a very easy, please stop. Doesn't know what you want. And he's used to having to see you, so he looks he's looking to get to you in his eye, that's all. But don't quit him. So by pausing for too long, he doesn't know that that is what he heard. Right now, imagine that he's saying, Is that what I heard? Okay, go forward. There you go. Yep, one. Yep, keep going. Now we're gonna insist that he goes. Yep, just keep asking for forward. That's all right. He still just doesn't know. He still just doesn't know. Keep asking for forward. Don't quit him. Keep asking. Keep asking until he gets it. Don't quit him. Keep asking until he gets it. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, you can't quit him. So we got to keep asking until he gets it. So I'm going to install the go forward while we're standing in this position just to have. So see how my up. So my no answer right, but I'm not going to drop the line because I need the line. If he slows down, I'll put my hand up and then I'll relax. One, and I'm going to go ahead and run my hand up the line, bring him to the elbow, stop moving the feet. Help me get a great one. You can hold your hand. I, you just the reason I do it this way is to remind me where to be. If you need to hold it right here, you know, just, just to remind yourself where to be. If you want to hold the stirrup, I mean, that's a little awkward because you can get yourself kind of in a bad position. Um, you want to hold the front of the side. I'm just whatever will help you remember to stay here. I do it this way to remind me to where I need to be so that it, it's, it, it's in my mind that I don't have to think about that part. I'm already where I'm supposed to be. But if that's all uncomfortable for you, then Whatever you can do to remind you to be here. If you start getting out of position, which you haven't been, then you're going to have to start coming back up here. So, go forward with a 
chest, your arm is straight, your elbow is locked. As soon as he starts walking, you're going to rest your elbow. You're going to take a softness into your elbow. That's going to tell him the walk is what we were looking for. Then you're going to walk together, soft, your arm soft. You have not having to keep telling him to go. You're, your arm is nice and soft. If he stops, you're going to, again, retell him, I want you to go. As soon as he starts to go, soften your arm again. It's not a drop. It's not, you're not going to try to make that snap move at all. It's very gentle to soften your elbow. Once we're ready to ask him, so say he did four or five steps, then we're going to just gently, so like you can, if you have the other piece of the line in your other hand, you're going to let yourself roll your hand, like run your hand up that line to get a nice feel on his nose without, you don't need to get to the snap, you need to get to about here. Get your hand up to there, gently bring him around. When he stops moving his feet, let go. Open your hand, let go. You'll have a hold of the rope in the other hand so it won't drop to the ground and then let him know he did a good job. Now don't wiggle the line, that means back up. Kind of nag at him. Yep, don't wiggle the line, that means back up. Don't you back up, because that means back up. So everything we want to project to him is forward. So hand forward. Our body language means we're going to go forward. This way he feels, don't, don't wiggle the line, it means back up. See how much pause between your last kiss there is? You're not nagging at him. So he's like, well, I guess she doesn't really mean it. So I'll just hang on. There you go. Your goal is to make him want to know how to stop that obnoxious noise. Well, he listened exactly what you told him to do. You pulled his head and his feet to you. So, I just want to of a lot of that just, and this is probably it wasn't working, so you quit. You went to do something different. So he has no chance. chance to learn this with you right okay. but see like he's still paying, paying attention to something over there right? I waited for the extra nod because I got stopped moving more than once. So he understands that part. Now I'm telling him there's a little bit more to it. Okay. So every horse you work with, you have to adjust. So in his case, if he's having a hard time with you going, what you can do is you can have this little piece here and give him driving energy right here. I wouldn't drive him from behind because it'll spin him away. And I'd be careful how 
the sheaf, I go two because I wouldn't want him to kick me. So I would give him driving energy right here where I would use my own leg and see if I can get him to go forward like that. If that's necessary. That I would call forward. I wouldn't say I'd want to do it, but if you felt that he wasn't responding, you can kind of take it up a notch by doing that. Him off. We want to learn. We want him to learn. Now you're doing a lot of kisses. So a single kiss would be just walk. Good. Good. Walk with him. It's okay. It's okay. You have a long relationship of he doesn't really do that. So he's there. You go. Poke him close. 
yourself? You thought about moving with your own feet? Yep, yep. Go ahead and give him a poke in the side, just like you were doing before to get him to go. Yep, see how you're still tempted to move your own feet? So he, he's supposed to lead the way. Yep, go ahead and give him a poke on the side or, or whatever you can do to drive him forward now. Yep, there. Stay with him. Perfect. Lower your hand now. He's walking. Lower it. Yep. Okay. Okay, you're way out of position. That's okay. It's okay. And stop. Good. It's okay. And before he stops on his own. <laughs> but you got a good walk, right? Yeah. He started to finally walk. And then you got your stuff again back on a position to make the position. Yeah. We don't want to, you need to stay to the saddle. I mean, I've never tied anyone to a saddle because that would be dangerous. But you need to stay glued to the saddle. Stay glued to your fender. Okay? This way, and don't let him leave behind because you don't want to get in the kick zone by accident. So you want to make sure that when you go, he goes. You know, you go together and not. Um, you were correcting yourself. I saw you go. Oh, yeah. I saw. So it, like I said, it's when you first start catching yourself. That's when you can. Until you catch yourself, you can't break the habit. Third one. I want you to poke him forward. But you put your hand down. Good. You lower your hand now because he's walking. Good. Up. Good. So somehow it's turning into a two-fisted thing when you when you go to stop him. He's not he's not running away with you, so we don't need to have two hands on the floor. You want to make sure that you just run the other hand. Yes. What's happening right now is you're kind of going in here like you're rope climbing. You know, you know like on a tug of war or something. We don't need to do that. We just need. To so, so what you do is you're, you're asking him to go, and then you can hand it to yourself. Hand, hand me, like this hand, hand it, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I mean, it, it, no, because if you're a rider, he's going to see you up that high anyway. I'm going to just do it I'm just gonna, so he doesn't step on it and cause a problem that just communicates that you didn't need. Yep. On the third one, you're going to poke him. Say, I said go. But don't quit now. Keep telling him. Yep. Keep telling him. Good. And now, yep, just go with him. That's a bug-related... If he goes for grasp, and you're like, yep, no, I don't think so. Nice try. But I always let him do the bug with things. Good? Good? Let him know he's doing the right thing. Put your hand down. Let him know he's doing the right thing. There you go. Now grab the other hand. Yep. Grab it. And that, there you go. Now, yep, yep. Okay, little, little stop. The yell out of it. But that's good. That you're getting the mechanics, for sure. Okay? But there was a little, there was a little yell to it, right? There was a little pull around. So we want to still make it a nice, polite stop. You're not in an emergency situation, so we don't need to get them stopped. So 